Hola, que tal? It's Johnny in Lanzarote. And it so happened my holidays fell on the last day for this quest adventure video series. So we gotta do, we gotta stick with the plan and, and uh, give you what you want. Today it's gonna be my top five tips for when you're one week out from each quest event. Number one, straight into it, tapering. You see, some people think tapering is like sitting back by the pool, legs up, G and T in hand, and just waiting around till Saturday comes and then you hop on the bike and you do your event. In fact, G and T should stand for gradual tapering because that's what we need to do. So what I mean by that is about two weeks out, you wanna cut your training volume down by 25% and then with one week to go, just half it. Okay, so, but important, don't drop the intense sessions. So maybe one or two sessions, short but intense. For example, if the event is on Saturday, then on the Wednesday, do like a 45 minute interval session where you might do six or seven uh, intervals of about 50, 60 seconds and allow a good three minute rest between each interval. And then this will, this will not result in accumulation of fatigue. You should be, you'll be good. Then the day before, try going out on your bike and just do some sprints, like eight second sprints, maybe six or seven of those. And that's a good way to just get, drive your neuromuscular system and also give you an idea of how you're feeling for the next day. What I will say is stay away from the gym. No heavy lifting, because that will just fatigue your muscles. Move if you want. You can do all of the hip mobility stuff as much as you want, the stuff that we did in the last video. And the one last thing is on the morning of the event, don't bother with any long 30 second stretches of your calves or your quads. Because actually what that does is it weakens your muscles by causing little micro tears and then actually you're not at your best. So leave that till after. Secondly, right, nutrition. We've heard it all before. I could harp on about it for ages. But if I was to try to condense it down, I would say don't go to the Italian the night before and load in your mouth with pizza. Just stick to what you normally have. And during the day, right, this is where we got to get this right. You want to try and get in between 30 and 60 grams of carbohydrate per hour. And just know what foods that equals. So like for an example, a banana is 20 grams. A jam sandwich would be about 50 grams. A gel is 30. So uh, what I do is I'll, I'll have a gel every 30 minutes to, to 40 minutes. And that, that makes sure I don't deplete my glycogen levels. But if ever Quest want to have an event out here, or it's over 20 degrees, then it's really important to prioritize your hydration. So uh, I'd be making up a liter bottle of water, putting 40 grams of sugar into it, so that you get a 4% uh, carbohydrate drink, and then put a couple of pinches of salt, and that's what keeps your electrolytes in check. And then that's what you're gonna carry on that day. Now, it will happen at home, we're gonna get hot days, and that's what I recommend. But more often than not, it'll be less than 20, and this is where you can prioritize carbohydrate. So you can make your drink up to about an 8%, so 80 grams into a liter of water, and away you go. And this will help keep you fueled as well during the hour. Um, know what foods you can handle, right? Some people will try a gel on the first day of their quest, and it, it'll just be a mess. So, you know, their stomach won't know what hit it. So definitely have practiced what you're gonna use. Third is know your numbers, so your fitness numbers. So what I mean by that is your zone, like your, look, okay, a, a heart rate threshold zone is the intensity that you can continue for one hour. So this is important to know this because you don't wanna be in this zone for too long, otherwise you, you'll, uh, you'll burn all your matches and you can run out of steam. So what does that zone feel like? It feels like uh, legs are burning, breath, heart, uh, breathing is up high. You can't string a sentence together. You probably manage a couple of words and you're sweating. So that's what zone, that's zone four, heart rate threshold. Zone three then is kind of like a little less than that. It's what we call comfortably uncomfortable. You can sustain it. You can, you can talk in short sentences. So that's, a nice one to play between these zones. Zone one is like 
out with your granny, tell, tell them all the news. Easy. So I can definitely deliver a talk about this if Elite Events want, we want to work with that. We can deliver one online maybe about how to get your zones calculated through a threshold test. But that's for another day. Number four, right, is tricks of the trade. Uh, I'm gonna say straight off, the, straight off the bat, caffeine is your best friend, right? It's safe, it's legal, and it works. So it's the main one that's got some evidence behind it. Uh, how it does it is it, it actually blocks adenosine in the brain, which is, uh, it causes, and adenosine causes fatigue, so it blocks that, so that's how it works. But, I, but it's actually really more important that you understand how much you need to give yourself uh, an effective dose. And it's between three and six milligrams per kilogram body weight. So for someone who's 70 kilograms, they would want at least 210 milligrams. So I was in the shop earlier today, uh, getting the bike, renting the bike, and I picked up this stuff. So this is a Power Bar Caffeine Boost. It's got 200 milligrams. So, you know, that's thereabouts what I would need to have an effect. So I would take this on uh, the first Quest Chimera event and, and watch the steam coming out the ass. Then uh, the next trick tip I want to say is mental preparation, right? This is where you can really do yourself a nice bit of help by looking back over your, your improvements, maybe over the last three months of your training. And I was thinking about this coming over in the plane, like how could you, how could you get a positive uh, mental prep? It's by seeing how far you've come on, looking at your volume of training, your speeds, your averages, and that should give you a nice sort of uh, boost before your day. Make lists, you know, don't forget anything. Like I, I think if you, if you imagine yourself naked and you're gonna dress yourself from your, from your feet up the night before, then you'll remember your socks, your shoes. And lastly, it's the, anyone ever heard of The Chimp Paradox? It's a fantastic book. It's about how you're gonna manage your chimp. Check it out, have a read of it. I was, I'm listening to it on an audiobook and it's, it's, on, it's on the ball. It's how you're gonna let, you can actually release your chimp on the day, which is gonna give you that extra level of intense exercise if you need it to finish high and get a PB for yourself. So look, there are my five tips for, for, for a week out. I'm now off to take out the bike and check out this island. All the best in all the quest events. Ciao, August, Garamila Mahagod.